Let's start again. From okay, my okay. point of view, I need to complete the, okay, the if formalities. You give, if you give me, it's going to take, I don't know, seven, ten minutes at the longest to do this. You will do his bit, then you can do your bit. That is the quickest way to get through. If if, right. if you're going to keep interrupting me with, with trying to get your point across, then we're not, not going to get anywhere. Let me just say these things. We've got it on, rec uh, it's recorded, then you know what's going on. And he's going to say his things, then you can do your thing. Is I that agree. Fair? Okay. That's Sorry, right. I just want to ask one question. Do you make a recommendation after your investigation? In this case, no. I, I will forward it to the uh, prosecutor and he will decide on whether there's merit so or not. But you don't give any so, uh, any sort of advice or... Uh, well, I don't know where we're going and I don't know where... No, no, I'm saying after, we, after, we, after we've completed okay, this conversation, so, I'm saying, after we've completed this conversation... We, I can make a recommendation. You can make a recommendation. I can, yes, okay. or, I, or I might decide not to. Yes. And then... But it's the prosecutor. No, no, I understand he has the final say, but yes. obviously your input is valuable to them because the prosecutor has not interacted with us. No, but the, the prosecutor, this docket will now be forwarded yes. to either the Specialized Commercial Crimes Unit mm -hmm. or to the Director of Public Pro Prosecutions in yes. Cape Town, mm -hmm. who will appoint the prosecutor. The mm -hmm. prosecutor will peruse the docket yes. and he will decide whether there needs to be further investigation mm -hmm. where he will then... Um, Come back. request or basically give instructions to the investigating officer to cover this, that, that, and the other, or not, or he will say, right, there is a case, or no, there is not a case. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then obviously I will come back to you to keep you informed of what the status is. All right. Let's, let's carry on. Okay. So, first of all, first point, this is a courtesy uh, visit by Mr. Goodson and myself. We don't need to be here. This claim is of no consequence to Mr. Goodson because there is no claim. We'll, we'll show you later on. Um, if at any time we feel the interview is becoming uncomfortable, we will leave. We'll pack our stuff and go. Mr. Goodson does not feel comfortable with this meeting at all. There is a massive amount of evidence of police intimidation, harassment, violence, assault, robbery, theft, and too many criminal activities to mention out, of, out in the public domain to feel comfortable under these circumstances. So we are not comfortable sitting here talking to you because of historic events. There is proof of police involvement in robberies and evidence of crimes by banks. This is perpetrated by the banks. This evidence stored on computers, disks and hard drives was stolen by police officers who drove police vehicles. The fact that you, Mr. Schultz, told Mr. Goodson that you are not going to arrest him is an intimidation tactic. There are laws against intimidation and harassment. There exists no prima facie evidence of your claim against Mr. Goodson. There is no evidence that he's committed any crime of any kind whatsoever. Um, the mere fact that you haven't read the book. Yeah, have you read my book? How, how can how can no, no, no. Let, let us let us. No. I mean, I will do now. It's now question and answering session. Okay. Please just right. put okay, on let, report let, what okay, you want. Sorry, let me let me carry on. Um, <clears throat> if you wrongfully arrest Mr. Goodson. A claim of wrongful arrest will be lodged against the Minister of Police and all officers involved, and they will be sued. There is no claim against Mr. Goodson, and this is not a criminal matter. It is a civil matter. SAPS has no jurisdiction. It is also an abuse of process. This will be brought to the attention of your superiors and the Commissioner if you continue to arrest Mr. Goodson. The Reserve Bank was foreclosed on 25 December 2012 through the UCC process by the OPPT. They are a non-entity. They are not allowed to do any more business. They are not allowed to go to the police to lay charges. They are busy with fraudulent activity. All government departments and every single police station have been informed of the OPPT UCC foreclosures. I don't know if you got the information, Mr. Schultz. What you are doing now is unlawful. The Reserve Bank has no business claiming anything from anyone. They have been foreclosed. What needs to happen is the following. You need to investigate the massive theft, fraud and mass financial destruction of South Africa perpetrated by the Reserve Bank. The Reserve Bank is directly responsible for the state of the country. It is stealing from you, me, your family and friends. I'm done, Mr. Goodson. Say what you need. Yeah. <clears throat> as, as Mr. Russell said, uh, we have a back problem being in your presence, and uh, I have absolutely no integrity in the South African Police Service. Um, as you know, uh, your previous commissioner, he was fired 
of involved of uh, criminal activity and property deals worth 1.7 billion rands. His predecessor, Jackie Salibi, was sent to prison for 15 years. So you have a very corrupt organization. Obviously, this corruption percolates right through it. So you really, in, in, I'm sorry to say this, but I believe really, you have no, not personally, I'm not talking about you personally, but as an organization, you lack integrity. And you are now being used by the Reserve Bank. Um, I believe that when, when you uh, when you were tested as a policeman, uh, you were born in 1964, I presume it was, what, 1978, somewhere around there, you took an oath. You remember taking an oath? Yes, just say what you want to yeah, say. Okay, you, you took an oath that you would be a <clears throat> peacekeeper, that you would keep the peace. I, I just want to, am I correct in saying that? I mean, I don't want to in, impute things that are not true. Yes, I confirm that I'm a police officer. Yeah. That I hold the rank of colonel. That I did appoint you. Uh, that mm -hmm. did show you my appointment certificate. Yes. Okay. And that I'm an <laughs> officer of the law. And yes. and and that I was investigating the contravention of Section 33 of the Reserve Bank okay. Act. Right. Okay. So this is now yes. in reply to that. I've also informed you of your rights, not to self-incriminate yourself. Mm. Um, you don't have to uh, answer questions. You have the right to recall. So. And, and, mm -hmm. and we've now moved on from okay. there. So, yes, I am a police officer. I did yeah. identify myself as yes. such. No, okay, so you, you, are, you are a peacekeeper, and you know, one of your, your, your motives of arms is that you are there to serve the people, and uh, you are there to uh, keep the peace. So, it seems you are saying that I breached the peace. Uh, and that, but we'll come back We're to We're talking about the statutory convention. No, no, it's, it's not a statutory The South African Reserve Bank. No, you, you're mistaken. I'm going to come back to that. But now I want to ask you a question. Am I a suspect of a crime? Yes, sir. That is why I requested All right. this meeting with you. Okay, that's fine. Bye, that's, bye, bye, bye. That's bye. right. That's fine. You tell me. And now I want to know is, is it a crime to tell the truth? Please answer. Is it a crime to tell the truth? Well, sir, that is a legal question which has to be so determined by doing? the what prosecutors. By the prosecutors, because um, if it is a statutory convention, and no, 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 you're going off the tangent. I if, ask you a question: if, Is if it, it a crime to tell the truth? Please answer me: Is it a crime? If you're not allowed to tell it, it may be. Oh, please! And if, if that, and if the truth is a, is a crime, that is my second question: Is it a crime to expose crime? Is it a crime to expose crime? It is a good thing. You agree with me? Yes, it is. Thank you. So what are we doing thing. here? So why am I here? If I've exposed crime, why am I here? You are here because a complaint was laid. A false by complaint. The complaint by but the by reserve who, bank. Who laid that complaint? Who signed who that document? Charge? I mean, it can't be just a reserve bank. Someone reserve must bank signed is it an off. entity. It's not a person. Who, who's, who's, who's signed it off? You know, it's a senior official of the reserve bank that laid a criminal complaint on well, you. Can you give me his name? Dr. De Jaffe was it? Yeah, it was Dr. De Jaffe. Yeah, Dr. Yes, De Jaffe. It was. Okay, all right. All right. So, um, <coughs> but just to, to continue with that, mm. okay. So, and and the allegation or the, 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 the charges that were laid, okay, mm. are that you contravened the secrecy clause of the Reserve Bank Act in that you um, conveyed information obtained mm. during uh, your dealings, business dealings with the bank and or the meetings that you attended as a director, as you were, mm. uh, of the South African Reserve Bank, by way of communicating it to other parties outside of the bank, mm. um, by um, giving interviews um, on a radio station, I think, and by publishing the book. Mm. Uh, the book will, inside the Reserve Bank, mm. its secrets and whatever review. So that is... That, that okay, is that. Right, is that. Right, okay, right. so now yeah. um, I need to get, if you want to give me an explanation, which you're not obliged to, mm -hmm. your side of the story, I take it to a prosecutor. Yes. And the prosecutors are ultimately the people who decide whether there are merits in a case, yes or no. So that okay. is all that I'm doing here. Yeah, all right. So now I want to ask you another do whistleblowers have a role in society? Yes, sir, they do. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think this is going to take us any further. I think it will it take will us further. Well, yeah. I'm a whistleblower. Do you know what a whistleblower is? I know what a yes. whistleblower is. So, so yeah. I'm going to prove to you I'm a whistleblower. All right. Now, <coughs> we have, as I said, I mentioned with the, I, I don't trust the police force. We even have a, a head of state. You know, Mr. Mr. Zuma? 
Do you know how many criminal charges he has outstanding against him? I think it's, I mean, we all read the papers and the yeah, press, but, but, but that has got nothing no, to do with No, no, it is very relevant to the society we're living in, that so, we have a criminal at the head of the state. And now you are trying to uh, accuse me of being a criminal. Sir? He has 740 charges outstanding against him. He is the head yes, of state. Yes. And, and uh, This is not the correct forum. And I'm not yet no. to argue that with you. Yes, is if not you no, it is relevant, it's relevant to the fact Mr. that Mr. you are accusing Mr. me Mr. of a crime. Are you have the ability... You, Mr. Schultz, have the ability to go and do your homework, do your research, do your investigation, because that is what you do. And you look like a man, you can do a job, and you can go and look into the criminals that are fucking up this country. They are fucking up this country, Mr. Schultz. And people like you and me are the only ones that can turn things around. And it's happening. Believe you me, I am part of a group of people globally that have made... Lists of fraudulent judges, government officials, and we are dealing with them on a daily basis. They are being arrested, Mr. Schultz. They are being arrested as we sit here talking. You can watch the news. You see that the truth is starting to come out. People are being arrested more and more. It's going to become a landslide one of these days because there are big things happening behind the scenes. Big things. And this today here... You have an opportunity to actually do the right thing and go and investigate the real criminals. Because if you go read his book, you will see the, the evidence of the people that is working in the Reserve Bank that told you to come and intimidate and harass Mr. Goodson here. They are the people that are the criminals. They are the people that are stealing billions from us on a monthly yes, basis. I just want to put on record, I wasn't instructed to intimidate or bully or... Anything like that. that. Is what I was do. not instructed. No, you weren't. That. You weren't. But that is their modus operandi. They're using you. Right. They're using so, you to intimidate yeah. me. But I think I'm, I'm, I feel sorry for you because yeah. you've got a job to Mr. do. Mr. Goodson, is what, what else would you like to add without okay. interviewing me? All right. Okay. Well, I want to mention that I, I told you that now that uh, that we have a criminal as president. The previous president, uh, no, the one before him, the clerk, he is also a criminal. And uh, are you aware that uh, there was a man, a Frenchman, Honoré de Balzac, who once said, behind every fortune stands a great crime. Do you know what Mr. de Klerk's fortune is? He has one, 12 billion rand in a Liechtenstein bank account. Where did he get that money from? This is money from, from, from the people of yeah. South Africa. He stole that money. 12 billion. Do you know how much that is? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, let, let me just carry on. Uh, next point I raise here is the Constitution. You are aware that in this country they have freedom of speech. You know that. It's an entrenched clause. And I just want to read it to you just to refresh your memory so that you know that what I have done is not uh, illegal. This is uh, Section 16, Subsection 1. Everyone has the right to freedom of expression, which includes a freedom of the press and other media, like my radio interviews. And the book that you wrote? Yes. B, freedom to receive or impart information or ideas, freedom of artistic creativity, academic freedom, and freedom of scientific research. So I have freedom of expression. Do you agree with this, that this is part of the Constitution? I agree with the Constitution. I think it's a very good and sound Constitution. Now, I have the floors, but we won't go into that now. Uh, section 33. Now, if you read Section 33, This is important. It says here, no director, officer, or employee of the bank, and no officer of the Department of Finance shall disclose to any person except the Minister or Director General of Finance for the purpose of his or his exercise of his or function or in required to do so from a court of any law, any information related to the affairs of the bank. No director. Am I a director of the South African Reserve Bank? He's not a director. Am I a director of the South African Reserve Bank? You are not, I believe Thank you were you one. You are, but you no, no, this is director. no past tense here. This is only present. No director. And furthermore, I was You have a, to be a director to fall under that clause. Yes, so I, I don't fall under the clause. You must get that right. Second thing is, I am not a director. I was not a director. Do you know what I was? I was an independent 
non-executive director. It doesn't state that here. And that is, that is as I was appointed. He was a consultant to the bank. He's yes. not employed by the I bank. I was never employed. So I'm not, I'm not governed not by the employee. rules of the bank. And let me tell you that when I was at the bank, I had the right to access any information I wanted to because I was independent. And the bank couldn't fire me after I signed the contract. Now I want to bring something else to your attention. This is the letter of appointment that I received from the bank. And it's dated the 27th of August, 2003. It says, appointment to the board of directors of the South African Reserve Bank of Shell's representative. I have pleasure in informing you that in accordance with section 43A, read in conjunction with regulation 34 of the regulations framed in terms of section 36 of the South African Reserve Bank Act, Act number 90 of 1989, shareholders at the ordinary general meeting held on 26 August, 2003, elected you to the board as a shareholder's representative. Your aforementioned appointment is effective from today for a period of three years. I personally wish to congratulate you on your appointment and advise that the office of the Secretary of the Bank will be in contact with you shortly. In the interim, I advise for purposes of assisting you with your forward planning that the next meeting of the Board is scheduled to take place in Pretoria at 9 a.m. on Friday the 14th of November 2003. Yours sincerely, Titi Imboweni. This is the letter I received. This is my letter of appointment. Yes. Now, where does it state that there is a secrecy clause that I may not disclose anything. This is my letter of appointment. All right. Can you just record that in your... Uh... That is that is recorded. I mean, we are both recording this. Yes. So... Um... No, no, in your deliberations, that there was no... I was never informed of any secrecy clause. And that this this secrecy clause applies to existing software. Directors. Not by past. It, it doesn't state... And on that point of law, you haven't got a hope of getting this past the prosecutor. But let's, let's come to okay. another point. I, th I think that is for the prosecutor to decide, because that, that is why that <laughs> is his job. My job is to gather the facts, and his job is to make a decision right. on the law. Now, um, that's, that's why I say Section 33 is irrelevant. Now, there's another thing. What if I'm exposing criminal activity? Am I not what are you going to do about what, what, what it? Is, what does that section say now? Am I forbidden to expose criminal activity? These are, and I mean, this is a serious question. Does section 33 say you may not disclose to any other person criminal activity? Section 33, to my recollection, does not state that. Correct. You've got that with you. You know exactly what yes, it Yes, it doesn't state that. Yeah. So, okay. what, 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 what are we here for? Okay, Please. Fine. Right. I think, you know... Let's conclude the interview. No, 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 no. I'm, I want to carry my last few points, please. Okay, all right. Uh, now, the, um, some of the criminal activity, and I'm sorry that you haven't read the book because, I mean, this, this is... It's a mind opener. This is a part and parcel of your whole investigation. If you haven't read what I have said... Then, you know, why are you investigating? Why are you I, what? I've never said I didn't read the book. Have you read you the never book? never gave me... But you started asking me questions. All right. So no, but I want to know. Don't bring this the wrong way around. The, no, book, no. the book is in here. Okay. Kenya. Oh, all right. Now, you were aware that in the book I mentioned that, and this actually I haven't mentioned the book, so I think this, you, we need to record this. Uh, in 1989, the Reserve Bank Act was. Uh, no, no, I believe you. There's the book. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Now, in 1989, the Reserve Bank Act was amended. The first act was the Banking and Currency Act of 1920, and the second was the Bank, uh, South African Reserve Bank Act of 1944. The two previous acts do not have a secrecy clause. So why was a secrecy clause suddenly introduced in, in uh, 1989? I will tell you why. During the 1980s, the Reserve Bank was alien. The, the South Africa had a strategic gold reserve, which wasn't, it wasn't reflected in the, uh, in the statements at Kloten Airport in Zurich. This gold was transferred to America to help out insolvent banks. Uh, uh, Citibank, JP Morgan. And it was part of uh, a scheme called Operation Hammer. And this, by the way, you can look this up. It's on the internet. I suggest you read it. Write it down. Operation Hammer. You need to know about this. And Chris Stoltz, who drafted the 1989 legislation, Put that secrecy clause in to cover up the heist that was going on, the theft. That's why we have so a secrecy clause. We lost 3,000 tons. What is 3,000 tons of gold worth? Do you know, Mr. Schultz? Have you any idea what it's worth? It's a lot of money. Two trillion rands. That is why we had a secrecy clause. Now, 
<clears throat> I um, I just need to explain to you how the legal system works. There seems to be some confusion here with you and the Reserve Bank. You know, we've got we've got what we call a common law. That's like your law of persons, your law of interest, interstate succession, the law of uh, property, the law of contract, the law of dealings. That's your common law. Then you've got constitutional law, which is a little bit smaller, and then you've got your criminal law. Now, this is not is not a criminal matter, and I'll explain to you why. It's a civil matter because the Reserve Bank, you haven't explained to me what, the, what, the, what is the Reserve Bank? Is, is the Reserve Bank part of government, in your estimation? So no, 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 don't duck this stuff. You're not going to duck this one. No. Is it part of government? I'm actually going to stop the interview now because I'm not here to answer your questions. I'm here no, no. To, to see whether you want to give me an no, 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 explanation. No. That, I, I, I that want you to have done. No, I want you to as an investigator. That you have you, done. I want you that to you have done. I want you to understand. You now, I want you, you to understand what is at stake. You don't seem to know about these things. You are starting to interrogate me. I'm not I interrogating am you. Terminating this no, no, we're going to finish it. Now, now we're finishing it. Now I'm finished. I want to mention that there were two there were uh, that at the World Bank Karen Hoos. She was a whistleblower. She broke the secrecy code. She reported she report improper accounting, corruption, criminal behavior, and no action was taken. Then there was Greg Smith, vice president of, of uh, Goldman Sachs. He wrote a book, Why I Left Goldman Sachs. And he reported on unethical behavior, ripping off of clients, mortgage-backed securities fraud, and no action was taken. I believe, Mr. Schultz, there is absolutely no case to answer. This is a civil matter. The, the bank is no locus standing in judicio in this matter. It's using you to sort, sort out a civil matter between myself and the bank. It is not a criminal matter. I have not stolen from the bank. I have not defrauded the bank. They have, are trying to cover up their criminal activities by attacking me, and they're using you. All right, Mr. Schulz. Thank you. We feel sorry that, you, that you're in this situation, but honestly, think about this. That's fine, but no, no, I've no, already no. explained to you no, no, at no, length. No. I've, I've allowed you to put Thank you to me much. what we you want to. And that. I don't think it's going to it's not gonna go add anywhere value or go any further it's from It's not going to go anywhere because so, there's no case. So, I mean, no case. I mean, that's it. I've Mr. Goodson has given his explanation. Okay, it's not in writing. Uh, but it is fine. Okay, okay we've got to thank you, thank you for your time. time. But, uh, and, um, but uh, just, <laughs> you know, you are within a unit that's supposed to investigate these big crimes. So, if you want to lay a complaint, okay, you do so in writing by way of an it's affidavit not help because the at whole the police broke. station, it's all okay, broke. It's all and broke. then that that will ask them to forward it's it. Mr. Okay. you know so that's it. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Thank so you very much for your time. Right. And the time right now is ten o'clock. Just give or take a minute. Okay. Okay. Right, let's go.